Welcome to another video in the Learn to Excel series brought to you by Chemical Engineering Life. In this video, we will be having a look at the sum function and the sum if function and the sum ifs function. Very briefly, a sum function. And before we begin, just to give you a very brief overview. So the three functions that we'll be looking at are the sum, sum if, and the sum ifs. The sum function helps you find the sum of specific data points. The sum if function helps you calculate the sum given one criteria and the sum ifs function helps you calculate the sum given multiple criteria so in the very first case let's say you have a data set that looks something like right here you have a grocery list and then you have the total cost of each grocery in column b and you would like to know what is the total bill at the end now one way to do it is that you could oops sorry one way to do it is that you could click on each individual number and then press the and press the plus sign between each number and then that would give you the sum of all the numbers if you do that for all 15 of them but of course as you may have noticed that that will take you a lot of time and even though we only have 13 values now imagine if we had 50 or we even had 100 that is not a very good choice to pursue that is not a very good way to calculate the sum because that would take a lot of time but rather, luckily, Excel has an inbuilt sum function upon which if you click sum, if you write sum, and then you write a bracket, and you select a range of data points, then it will give you the sum of all the numbers in that given range. But that means that in this case, it is 457. Very convenient formula because you can easily calculate the sum by only defining the, the data set, and you can use that to find the sum of any given numbers. If you would like to only calculate the sum of the first half, then you can define the range of your, of your formula. So the input that you put into your function can be changed depending on what are the numbers that you would like to add. And just like that. Instead, and if you would like to have all the entire data, and if you like to have the entire data point, then you can always pull it down and you will get the sum of all the numbers that you have in that range on the other hand in this scenario it was quite an easy example because we only had the grocery list and then we had the cost right in front of us and you can only calculate the total sum that means that the total cost or the total money that was spent on all the groceries but what if you had an additional column that looks something like this what if you have the groceries in column a then you have the categories in column b and then you have your cost in column c and instead of earlier, now you're asked to present that how much money was spent on buying fruits, how much money was spent buying drinks, and how much money was spent buying all the other uh, categories. Of course, just like I showed earlier, one way to do it would be that you could literally manually go in and find the values that are uh, that are that was spent on fruit, and you could add them together, or you can. Or you can be smarter than that and you can use a sum if function. The sum if function allows you to tell Excel that Excel should only add the numbers if one condition is true. So what we'll do is that we'll write sum if, we will select the range. The range is the range where you have a criteria. So in this case, since it is fruits, so we'll select this. And now since we have four rows and we, al we would also like to do that for the drinks, nuts, and the meat, and we have the exact same range for all four of them. I will then highlight all of the range that we have that we have selected, and I'll press F4 in the keyboard. And as you can see that these dollar signs are added, that means that if I was to pull the formula down, this range will not change. I'll write a semicolon. Then I would like to uh, input my criteria. My criteria is stored in the cell G3. So there's that. And then we have to provide the sum range. The sum range are the numbers that you would like to be added for the condition, if the condition is true. So we'll select all of the cost that we have in column C. And once again, since we will be pulling down the formula and I don't want the range to change, then I will also press F4 right there. And there, and there you go. 
So that means that in total, $56 were spent on fruits. And now I would like to know how much money was spent on drinks, nuts, and meat. So I can just pull the formula down. And it will give me the money that was spent on drinks, on nuts, and on meat. And always make sure that the correct range has been selected. The way you can do that is that you can press F2 on your keyboard and it will highlight all the ranges that are involved in the formula. So the, the blue, that is our range. Um, that is the range for the criteria. So that means that Excel is looking for the cell G5 in this column. And then it, it is adding up the values in the C column. So that is completely perfect. That means that our category is being searched for nuts and it is only adding up the cost for nuts. And there you go. And then finally, we would like to know the total sum of all of our values. And then we can just add all of these together and it should give us 357. So this number matches that number. Hence, our sum if function is giving you the correct answer. And that is how you use the sum if function. But let's make it more complicated. What if instead of only one category, you have an additional column? Now you also know the people who bought the different categories and spent their money. And now you would like to know how much money was spent by Michael buying fruit and how much money was spent by Dwight and Jim buying fruit. So now you may have realized that in the earlier example, we only had one criteria. We were only adding up the cost for the category, but rather now we have two different criteria, right? We have a, we would like Excel to filter down a category, then also filter down on the person and only then should it find the sum. The way we can do that is we can use a sum ifs function. But before we do that, it's a good idea to set up the sum if function in this manner. So the first criteria that will be fruit, the second criteria that will be Michael, and then we'll do the same for fruit, 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 and then I'll write, uh, oops, sorry, Dwight, and then we'll write Jim here, and now we will write down the sum ifs. Now, unlike in the sum if function, you provide the criteria range and the criteria as the first two inputs and then you provide the sum range as the very last input but in the sum ifs function the very first input that you need to provide that is actually your sum range that means that the range which you need to calculate the sum of and then once again we will be changing that to f4 so that we have the uh, actual so, the, so, the, so that the range doesn't change when i pull down the formula and now we will provide the criteria one. My very first criteria is fruit. It doesn't really matter which one you use. If I could have used this as criteria one or this as criteria one, that does not actually matter. So in so just to make an example, we'll just use this one as criteria one. I'll press F4. Then I need to provide my criteria that is stored in K3. And then I will provide my second range. That is the second criteria range. And then my range is stored in L3. There you go. And I should also change this to the dollar signs using simply by pressing F4. There you go. And then I'll pull this formula down. There. So now we know that Michael spent $20 buying fruits. Dwight, he spent zero dollars buying fruits and Jim he spent thirty six dollars buying fruit and just to make sure just like previously I'll press F2 just to make sure that just to make sure that all the ranges are indeed correct and you can see that our sum range is the D column so that is perfect our first criteria is B and that is being searched for K4 so that K4 that is correct our second criteria is in column C, and that is being searched by L4. So everything works as it should. And that is step, and that is exactly how you use the sum ifs function. And if I and the benefit and the reason I have set it up the way I have set up on the on right here, that is 
One way to do it would be that you could also input your criteria in the formula. For example, I could have written Michael directly into the formula and not have it linked to the external cell. But the problem with that would be that, for example, if you would like to change this person, then you would have to manually go into the formula and change it. And sometimes if you have a very complicated formula, it's not a good idea to always go in and play around with the Excel formulas. But rather, if it is linked to an external cell like it is now, then I can change this to Dwight and my data will be automatically updated. And also, it's very convenient to double check and troubleshoot your Excel formulas if something is not working. At the same time, let's say that you're no longer interested in how much money is being spent on fruit, but rather you would like to know how much money is being spent on drinks. Then all you need to do is that you need to replace fruits with drinks in that cell and you can see that the data is automatically updated. If it had been inside the formula, then you would have to go manually open up each individual formula and replace fruits with drinks. So, but at the end of the day, it is completely your own choice how it is that you would like to set up the formulas in Excel. But so that, was, so that is essentially how you use the sum function, the sum if function, and the sum ifs function. And the brief overview is that if you would only like to calculate the sum of your entire data set, use the sum function. If you have one criteria, use the sum if. If you have multiple criteria, then use the sum ifs function. Well, thank you for watching. And if you would like to learn more about Excel, then visit the website of Chemical Engineering Life at www.chemicallife.com where you can sign up for online Excel courses ranging everything from basics to the advanced knowledge which can help you further Excel in your career. And also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Chemical Engineering Life for more videos. Thank you and have a great day.